Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to be showing you guys how to use the box counting technique and the reason why I'm doing this is partially because uh, a few people have asked me about how they can use this technique because uh, in my IA uh, I really messed up uh, the number so it doesn't make sense and it's not clear what to do. So this is a quick video just to show you guys how to do it. It actually really isn't that difficult. In this IA I'm going to be using Photoshop but that's basically all you need in order to do this technique. Yeah, so let's just uh, get started. So firstly, I'm going to go over a little bit of the theory. If you want to read more about it, you can do so uh, with the links below. I'm not going to go into too much detail about it. I'm just going to explain the equations part. So I'm just going to uh, read out uh, what the box counting method is about. So the procedure involves superimposing grids of different caliber size over an image, then recording the number of blocks the coastline passes through each caliber. With a finer grid, more detail is supposed to be picked up therefore allowing you to better find the fractal dimension. The method can be modeled using this equation. N, the number of boxes, is equal to C, a proportionality constant, multiplied by S, the scale factor, to the power of D, which is the fractal dimension. We can rearrange this formula to get it into the form Y equals MX plus C, plot a graph, and then find the gradient as the fractal dimension. So let's do that. So we take a log of both sides, then, based off log laws, we can split the two. So we get log n equals log c plus log s to the power of d. Then, of course, we can pull the d down. So we get log n equals log c plus d log s. And then let's just rearrange that, put the log n equals d log s plus log c. As you can see here now, if you've done linear regression, this is in the format of a y equals mx plus c equation. So in this case, y would be log n, m would be d, x would be log s, and c would be log c. So this means we can ignore the proportionality constant, and if we plot a bunch of y's against a bunch of x's, then we should be able to solve for d. So let's briefly talk about scale factors because this is kind of a difficult concept to talk about. But I'm going to simplify it, so if you're confused it's maybe because I'm simplifying the math, but this is a way to understand it just well enough in order to actually perform uh, this method and get the fractal dimension. So essentially every time you perform a scale, you make it so that four boxes can fit inside one box. Let's call this one scale. When you first start out, you have a scale factor of zero. Then that scale factor becomes 2 to the power of the number of times you scaled the box. This is a scale factor of 2 because it's 2 to the 1. Then if we do it again like this, uh, because this is the second time we scaled, that means the scale factor is 4. Then if we do it again and scale for a third time, that means the scale factor is 8. And you really only need four values to find the fractal dimension. Once you go beyond four, it becomes difficult to perform. Now there's a reason why it's two to the power of the number of times that you scale down the box for, but uh, that mathematics is a bit too complicated, and I'm not really um, uh, qualified to explain that to you. I'll link resources down in the description that may be able to explain it to you. But anyways, that's what the scale factor is. Okay, so now I'm gonna actually go on my computer and show you guys how I actually do this technique. So basically you're going to start by going on Google Images and you're just going to pick a random grid. You're going to want to look for one that has no white in the background so it's just a grid. Let's go to Tools, Color, Transparent. Uh, this one should be good. It doesn't really matter. So we just, we just need something that has a lot of boxes. And then after you've got a grid you're going to open up Photoshop. Then you're going to look for an image of the island that you are going to use to find the fractal dimension. However, what an important thing to do is that you cannot get a black image because then you'll have issues with the grid because you won't be able to see the boxes because uh, the grid is the same color as your island. And so this one will work because uh, it's a different color to my grid my grid is black. If that color was black then you wouldn't be able to see the grid. Then you're going to go to Photoshop and then you're going to open the image of Great Britain. Uh, I want a white layer on the background, so let's see, what can I do? Uh, oh, but before I do that, I'm going to get rid of all of the useless stuff around Great Britain. Okay, now that we're done, now we can put the grid on top. And this grid is way too small, so when you start out, the boxes need to be really big. And so this is going to be for scale factor zero. 
So it doesn't really matter how you place your grid, you just gotta place it somewhere. And then once you've got that sorted, what you're gonna do is you wanna go into Excel and you wanna set up a table so that you can record your data. So the data I've got here is, let me just make this bigger. I've got the scale factor on one side, and this is where I'm gonna write those numbers, zero, two, four, eight here. And then I've got log S, I'm gonna log that later. And then I'm gonna have the number of boxes. What that is, it's simply the amount of boxes that touch the coastline for each scale factor. And then we're just gonna log that. So let's start off with the first one, which is gonna be zero. I'm gonna see how many uh, boxes that we are gonna touch. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna count the number of boxes that touch the coastline. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna touch every box which touches the coastline. And for every 10 boxes, you're gonna double click so you don't have to count all the way to that number in your head because trust me, this is gonna get into the hundreds. Uh, you need a way to keep track. And so then you can just count tens when you go back. So for example, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Double tap. Uh, nope. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Double tap. One, two, three, oh, I don't know. Four, five, six. Okay, so I had two double taps, so that's 20 plus six, 26. So over here, I'm gonna write 26. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do what I said before, is that I'm gonna scale the boxes so that four boxes could fit into one original box. I'm actually going to, uh, there's a few ways to do it, but I'm just going to draw a box here and I'm going to give it an outline and I'm going to make that outline thick like this and I'm going to make sure that doesn't have an outline. Okay, so I don't know how to get those dots off, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new grid, delete the old grid, just bring a new grid in and then scale this grid so that four squares can fit inside that black box. Okay, there we go. So now we've got a grid, and we're just going to do the same thing again with this scale factor. So we're going to take a paintbrush. Okay, so now we've scaled it down by a scale factor of two. So now what we simply have to do is we need to count up the boxes again. So we do the same thing, and in this case you're going to know why we double tap because it's going to get like a bit hard to count. So, one, two, three, four, Okay, and then once we reach the end, basically, you know, what you do, you remember the last number that you counted, which, oh my god, was it seven? Okay, let's just say it's seven. And then we're going to count all the dark squares. So, one, one here, one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, six, seven, so seventy, so seventy-seven. So then we're gonna note that down here. So um, seventy-seven. Then the next scale factor, uh, because it's two to the power of two, that means it's four. So the next scale factor will be four. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna scale the grids down again in the similar way, in which four boxes are now gonna be squished into one more box. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my rectangle and I'm gonna make it into one square and now we've gotta try and fit four squares into that one. And now I'm gonna try and squeeze that whole grid into that little dot. Let's try. Okay, there we go. So there we go. Four boxes can fit into that one grid so that means we can use this grid. But as you can see, you may run into the problem that your grid is no longer big enough. Big enough. That's okay. We just copy Command C, Command V, and then we just drag that grid up here. We know it's already the right scale factor. Now you just gotta try and align it. So there you go. So I guess now I gotta make my uh, brush size a bit smaller. And let's go. So gotta rasterize and. So Okay, now that I've done that, I'm gonna count up all my dark circles. I can't remember, wait. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. And then my last number I remember was 4. So 13 times 10, 130. 
So the number of boxes is 134. Now I'm not going to do the last one because three is enough, but you definitely should. You can even do five if you want, but this is enough to get some good data. Okay, so now that we've got our data, what you could do is you could go and do uh, another one. So for example, this one would be eight because it's two to the power of three because it's the third time you've done it. Uh, the next one would be two to the power of four, which would be 16. Uh, but I'm just gonna use three. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna log as all of these numbers. Now you may be wondering, oh my god, wait, what, how do you, you can't log zero, right? Because log zero, like, doesn't actually give you a solution. So what the answer for this one is, it's just zero. Uh, nothing too complicated about it. Even the log base 10 of zero is not zero. For this case, you just put it as zero. And then over here, two, we're gonna equals, I'm gonna write log doesn't matter really what base it is as long as they're as long as you're consistent log 2 10 and then equals uh, log 4 and then you do the same over here uh, you can just like do this um, quickly with the shortcut but I'll just do each one so we have log 77 not plus or you can just and then just uh, and then the log and then the and then log uh, and then Okay, so now we've got our numbers, we've got our data, and now we can plot our graph and find the fractal dimension. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to a chart, we're gonna click scatter, we're gonna mark scatter, and then I've got this chart here, I'm gonna select data, I'm gonna click add, and then for the x value, and this is gonna be the scaling factor, so these ones, and then for the y values, those are gonna be these ones. And once we've selected our data, we're going to press OK. And we're going to get a graph like this. And that's exactly what we want. So what we're going to do now is we're going to put a line of best fit in. And then the gradient is actually going to be the fractal dimension. So we're going to uh, right click or double click, add trend line. And then click options, display R value on chart, why not? Display equation on chart. And then you can see here we've got the equation uh, y equals 1.1828 x plus 1.1435 and based off our previous equations you should know that the gradient of this graph 1.18 is the fractal dimension and that makes sense because the fractal dimension is supposed to be between 1 and 2. This is actually somewhat different to the actual value. The actual value is 1.25 but I uh, didn't do it so accurately and the box counting method isn't as accurate as other methods that there are. So I hope that helps anyone who's trying to figure out how to do the box counting method uh, to find the fractal dimension. Uh, that's how I did it. There's actually lots of different ways that you can do it. That's just kind of a method that I made up on my own. So if you have another method, please feel free to uh, share in the comments because lots of people are always asking me how to do it. And uh, yeah, this is just the method that I use. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later.